Hi there and welcome back to the third part of the Zombie AI tutorial. Now um, I've got another tutorial on YouTube about making a first person um, controller so um, I've just borrowed that, I actually rewrote it, but um, I've got a player now and um, the previous little circle we were using and moving around um, I thought it would be much cooler if we could um, actually be the player so um, you can do the other tutorial or um, I'll show you very quickly the code um, but you've basically got the ability now to move around and uh, and then you'll see the AI in action. Um, I probably should change the speed a little bit so that we can move a bit faster. So um, just real quickly, the script um, is over here. Um, change the speed up to say 20. Um, very quickly, I'll jump to here and I'll show you the first person controller script. So um, it's just basically the same as the tutorial. Um, if you uh, want to follow that you can follow it otherwise you can easily just go and borrow from the standard assets um, so if you go to assets and you've got the standard asset package uh, set up you can um, import the standard assets first person controller and use that and um, there's heaps of tutorials for you to be able to do that so I wanted to concentrate on the zombie um, and how to get that work um, so what we're going to do is we're in this tutorial is we're actually going to import the zombie. So um, I'm going to um, go to the asset store right now, um, and I've already uh, got it here. But if you just type in um, zombie, uh, you'll see there's this amazing um, zombie uh, by Pixel Tiger. Um, if you, it's it's free as well. So if you, uh, we're going to use this one for now. We're just going to um, click on it and import um, that. Now I've already done it, so it's nice and quick. So if you just click on, on import. Um, it will import all of the assets including all of the animations straight into your project um, as long as you're signed into Unity. So once I've um, I've done that I'm actually just going to uh, close the asset store tab because I'm not going to need it but you'll see there's a zombie um, folder has appeared in here and what we're going to do is I'll show you how easy it is to get this zombie in to trigger the animations, uh, the correct animation. So um, the actual model, the zombie model is in here as well um, and what we're going to do, if you see we've got the enemy right now and it's got the capsule that we had before, we're going to replace that capsule with the zombie model. So it's easy as dragging and dropping, so you just drag and drop onto enemy. Um, you'll see that the, uh, if I double click it here, that the zombie is inside the capsule. So I'm going to delete the capsule completely. Um, the zombie is positioned actually pretty well, I found um, first up. And um, the new import options for setting the scale correctly is really cool too, so it just works. Uh, right now though, it doesn't have an animator. So if you were to play this game, um, you would see that the, the um, top level enemy with the AI, uh, that still works, that still moves, but the animations don't get triggered. So, um, so we're going to show you just quickly how to do that. So it's not as bad as it seems. Uh, we're going to go back to my um, project in here. I'm just going to right click and um, I'm going to create an animator for this um, object. So I'm going to click create, go to animator controller and I'm going to call this enemy um, animator. Um, so this animator controller allows us to jump between animation states. So if I double click this, uh, you'll see this, if you haven't seen this before, you'll see this uh, little, little box and we create the animations and jump, use the transitions to jump between different animations. So the animations are all there. You can find them inside the zombie folder and then in the animations folder. And the basic one that I'm wanting is idle. So um, the, the basic state from um, when the game starts, I want it to jump straight to the idle. Um, by um, by doing this, uh, we need to. Even though we've made that animator, we still need to tell the zombie that we're going to be using that animator. So if you click on the actual zombie model on your scene, you'll see that the controller that we've just made hasn't been automatically assigned. So we'll just have to assign it. So we can just click and find the enemy animator and put it in here. So uh, by doing that, you'll see. Um, I'm going to hit play, and we'll see that the idle state gets triggered. Um, so it's actually already an idle, but it's not when it moves. It's not jumping um, state back to anything else. So right now it's literally just uh, going into the idle state. Um, if you want to play around with animators, um, what you can do is you can just dock them as another window, um, and I'll dock mine here, and we'll hit uh, move over a bit. We'll hit play, and you can see that they, as you as you're playing. Um, you actually see what's happening inside of the animator, so you can see what state it's in. So that allows you to be able to, be able to debug that a little bit easier. Um, right, I'll just dock mine back over here, um, so I can see both. Right. So um, 
the next stage that we need to do is get the next animation that we want to be able to jump to. So I'm back into animations again and I'm going to go straight to the walk-in place. Um, drag that onto the scene and you'll see it's not yet connected. Um, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to uh, have to jump to this but the, the reason for jumping to that has to be given. So um, over in the layers and parameters, if you click on in the animator, if you click on parameters, you're going to add a parameter. Um, and we're going to make it a bool, so a true or a false. So if you click on bool, um, um, inside of the, the code that we had, we called it chasing. Um, you could call this anything you want, but um, I'm just going to keep the uh, programming the same. So we had a state inside of our AI code that was called chasing. So I'm going to make this parameter inside the animator uh, chasing as well. Um, that allows us now, if I um, want to add a transition, you just right click on one of these um, animations, click make transition and drag it to the one you want. Now we need to set this parameter as I've said so this will go to idle, sorry from idle to walk in place um, on this condition. You can see in the inspector on the right hand side it's empty so I'll hit plus uh, already because I've created this um, parameter already it puts it up because it's the only one and then it's either true or false. So we want to go from idle to walking in place when chasing is set to true so it starts to move. Um, if I right click on the walk in place and make a transition back to idle again and then click on the transition the list is empty again for the condition but it's obviously the opposite so when chasing is false we want to go to that. Now the last little thing is um, setting the has exit time. Um, if you do that if you leave that on, it'll finish the animation before it transitions, and that sometimes gives you some weird results um, on this occasion. So I'm just going to untick the, the has exit time in both of those um, so that we get uh, an immediate transition to the next animation when we want it. Um, that's more or less it for the um, the. the the first part of the anime, so we just need to do the programming now. So you'll see right now um, that the idle uh, has still on because the, the player is far enough away and when I get closer nothing yet happens. If I uh, want to test this I can click this and you'll see that it's moved to walk in place and the animator should be doing the correct animation. Um, now what we bas basically we're going to do this bit in code, we're going to set this true or false based on the um, state of the animator, sorry, the state of the um, zombie AI. So um, jump back to scene over here and um, open up my code for the enemy AI. So uh, right, just straight to it. Um, what we need to do is we need to get the animator. So we're going to make a public animator. animator um, in here and I'm going to call it animator. Um, oops. animator. Um, once we have this, so this is going to be a public animator, we're going to have to drag it and drop in the inspector. Um, we need to basically access this animator and change the variable, the bool, to true or false. I'm going to do it inside of the um, inside of these state switches. So I'm going to go and do it just when we switch, so when we actually change state rather than doing it every single frame because that kind of won't work. So if I say animator dot and I do set bool because we set it as a bool and then I give it its name which we call chasing and then comma and then what we want to set it to. So when we set to uh, chasing we want to set the animators variable chasing to true and that should trigger the different animation. We we'll obviously do the opposite to that um, in here so we get animator.setBool and we set chasing again to um, false this time. Um, that will be it. Um, now I'm going to save this and the one thing I did notice in testing and while we're in the code we'll do this it will only change the animation state when it's thinking and we the way we created this as a as a um, efficient coroutine is um, we made them think after one second so 
when I was testing this it didn't work too well because it took uh, sometimes it took nearly a second before you saw the animation state change so I've bumped this down to 0 0.2 so that it will happen a little bit quicker and you shouldn't see it quite as um, visibly so um, that's more or less it if you uh, want to test this you'll see that once it's compiled um, when we run our code um, we'll have uh, the player as it gets closer um, the animation state switches and oh why is that not working oh, uh, kind of obvious mistake there when I look down here um, the, uh, the variable animator of enemy has been assigned so if I go sorry to um, enemy we'll see that we have the animator here and um, the animator is actually on the zombie so if you just drag the whole zombie and put it there you'll see that it now accesses the zombie animator component that we have here um, so pretty uh, basic error made there so hopefully now you'll see that it's jumped to the walk straight away and if I was to be able to get far enough away it would go straight back to idle um, now you notice it's uh, doing some jerky things and you can play around with this uh, this AI thing to tweak it but I found that um, I changed the speed a little bit when I was practicing um, with this one so I, I wanted it to move slower because if it moves too fast it's an unrealistic movement and also this auto braking um, stops the, the jumpiness um, I wanted the stopping distance to be pretty low and I wanted it to accelerate fairly quickly so it goes um, to full speed within a step uh, so that's kind of tweak those values as much as you like and try and get it to what you want. So um, that's pretty much it. Uh, the, the if I move the player further over, we'll watch this one more time and I'll show you that it does it does actually work. So uh, you'll see him it's in the idle state, and then when the player gets close enough, um, he'll immediately jump straight to the uh, walking state and start moving towards you. And when you move back out, um, you'll be able to get him back into idle straight, and it works pretty well. So uh, hopefully that's been a, a entertaining tutorial for you. Um, we may um, work a little bit and uh, do another tutorial and do a little bit on lighting and uh, making it look a bit more like a zombie game. And I may even do some uh, some shotgun shooting later on. So I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and uh, good luck and happy programming.